Hey guys, it's the Go Master Dilmer again, and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hit subscribe because it's really gonna help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today, I'm gonna continue the AR Foundation videos. We're gonna be adding a new implementation in AR that is gonna allow us to add indicators to AR objects that are selected. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you the scene that I put together for this demo about creating a bounding area for objects in augmented reality. So in the previous video, I show you how to create a statue, basically not how to create a statue, but how to add a statue that was very realistic. So in this video, I wanna show you how we can add multiple statues to our scene and also add a bounding area that is gonna represent what is selected. So one of the things that I've been doing is I work on a new script that basically allows you to place a new prefab. So I show you this before we have, you know, an AR session, an AR input manager, and I like to reiterate this because it's really important that you go through those concepts. If you haven't watched any of those videos yet, please make sure that you do that by looking at some of the videos in the, basically in this playlist. So the other component that I have is uh, AR session origin course I have an AR session origin component added with the AR camera. The AR camera is embedded into this object. I also have an AR plane manager. The reason why I have the AR plane manager is because we're detecting planes and basically currently detecting everything horizontal and vertical planes. For this demo I only need to do vertical planes so we could actually just remove the remove these components or just leave it as everything. I don't think it really matters right now. And, but just know that those options are available there. And then I also have an AR Raycast Manager because I need to Raycast against the detected planes. The reason why I need to do that is because I need to place a statue on those planes and I wanna make sure that I am colliding with those before I can place an object in AR. So the one that I did for this video, it's basically an extension to some of the ones that I've already been creating. I have multiple of them with different purposes. This one is called placement with many single prefab selection controller and I know that is very long for a class name but I, I really want you to know that this is for a single prefab and it will allow you to do item selection so I wanted to make it as verbose as I could just to explain what it was doing. So one of the options that I have in here is basically a place prefab. This is the dragon that we created previously and we added previously in the, in the previous video. So I'm basically reusing that, but I added more options to that and I'll show you that in a minute. So I also have a welcome panel, just the one that you're seeing right now on the screen. This is the one that shows the user the instructions about the experience. I also have multiple options on the bottom, which is basically either disabling shadows, and these are all toggles. So if you press disable, it's gonna show enable. If you press enable, it's gonna show disable. I also have it for lights and also for detection. If we want to stop doing detection for, for some reason, then you can do that by just pressing that button. And then of course that this means it's going to dismiss that welcome screen and it's basically gonna allow us to start the detection. So the other thing that I wanted to show you is what I actually did. So in addition to this script, I wanna show you what changes I made to the place dragon prefab. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag it and drop it onto the scene and then we're gonna basically zoom in and look at some of these options. So right now, if I were to select the dragon, you are gonna see that if you go to some of the options that I have in the inspector, so this one doesn't have anything, this one is the pairing one, and I use this one so that this is the one that I'm moving around. This one right here is actually the mesh that contains all the different components. So in the previous video, I show you that we had basically a mesh render and also a box collider. So that was basically everything that we had on that at that point. What I did for this video is I also added a placement object. This is a very simple script that I created previously for other videos that basically allows me to keep track of what items are selected. Also, if I had an overlay, if I wanted to add maybe text in here using Text Mesh Pro, I could display an overlay and it basically will toggle on and off based on the state of the selected property, which is happens to be this one. And if I open it up, I just wanna show you that it's very simple. So this one is just a very simple class it's called placement object. I have a serializable field because I wanna see, I wanna see it through, that in, through the inspector when something is selected. And also for troubleshooting, if I want to select it and change the state manually, then I could do that. I also have a public property that allows me to determine 
if you know the state of this property and then like I was saying I'm using text mesh pro to display an overlay so I added that to this class and also another another object that basically it's actually a string that allows me to change the text that is displayed on the overlay and then the first thing that we do is we basically get the component of text mesh pro and if we do have it then I set it to inactive by default because I don't want to show it if the item is not selected so that doesn't become active until you select an item and that's why I have this toggle here that sets it to active as long as the is selected property is equal to true otherwise it's not going to be shown and then I also set the text to be the overlay display text so that's what this class does then the other thing I want to show you is also the component that gets added to this so if I were to if you look at this placement bounding area let me go ahead and open it up and I'll explain it to you as we go through so this one is the idea so basically we we displace some bounding area that shows when something is selected so in this case it's going to be the dragon so I wanted to have a sphere around the dragon if it was selected say I have multiple dragons and I want to show the user that a dragon is selected then I'm basically using this class to create the sphere then one of the properties that I'm that I'm using here is whether I want to activate the bounding area and I'm not sure if I'm using this one just yet I think I added it for the purpose of making it optional but I don't think I need it to be honest so I'm just going to remove it because if you're going to look at the github repo I want you to look at things that I'm using the other thing that I'm using here is I want to know which object this belongs to so I'm using the placement object as a class as a private class that is basically going to get set as soon as this starts so I'll show you below what when we do that the other thing that I'm doing as well is we're basically storing the bounds of the, the placement bounds of the component the idea behind it was that I was going to get the bounds for the for the collider and then basically build the build a mesh around that I also changed that a little bit to be honest and I'm not using this anymore so I'm just going to remove it as well but I promise that what we're using below is our things that we are going to be using then the initialize is something that I use I just want to make sure that I got everything set up and then if I do that's when I start changing the position of the bounding area the bounding area is basically the component that is going to get created for the bounding area I also have a bounding radius and because I'm using a I'm using a sphere I want to basically change the sphere size if I wanted to change it to two I could change it to two or three or basically whatever radius you think is appropriate for the object that you're creating I also I also store the bounding box position in this case it's not going to be a bounding box anymore to be honest it's going to be a bounding I would, I'm going to call it bounding area position just so that we we're talking about the same thing otherwise you're going to get confused so this is going to be bounding area position we're going to store the position of the sphere that we're going to create and this is the one that it's going to control its position and also the bounding area material this one is important because I want you to have control of what material to add to the bounding area when something is selected so the first thing that I do is on the awake I call the setup bounds the then I get the placement object which happens to be in this same class so I'm basically going to go in and say okay give me that component it's going to get that component and store it in this variable if I don't have that component associated with this class I'm going to get an error and to be honest this is always going to be the case I'm always going to have a placement object because I made it a requirement component so we don't really need to check for this so I'm just going to remove that that's unnecessary code then the other thing that I do here is I'm also drawing a little gizmo so if you see I have a gizmo selected and I was using this for troubleshooting I don't really need it anymore but I'm going to leave it in there just in case you want to you want to use it in fact I don't think it's I don't think it's working all the way so let me just make sure that I show that and yeah I don't think I don't think I have that part working just yet so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and delete it since we're not going to be using it the one that I'm using is the the draw bounding box for sure and I'm also going to rename it to be draw bounding area let me say that I get bounding area I have an issue with my pronunciation sometimes so by now you probably know that I'm that I have an accent and it's probably really hard sometimes to understand but I'll try to do my best so the other thing that I have so I have this set of bounds that basically gets a placement object I also set the initial initialize equal to true 
then if we have initialized everything that we need which in this case is just a placement object then I'm gonna call this drop bounding area and the way that it's gonna work is if this object is selected which happens to be the placement object that's when I'm gonna be drawing the bounding area so the first thing that we're gonna do if you notice on the bounding area which I have it as a private and the first time that we go through this is gonna be null because we haven't created the bounding area yet so that's what I'm checking here if the bounding area is null then I'm gonna create a primitive and that primitive is gonna be a sphere the name of the primitive I'm gonna give it bounding area and the transform it's gonna basically put it right under the parent which it happens to be placement dragon so there's gonna be another object next to this one called bounding box then the next thing that I do as well is I get the mesh render and basically to get the material because we're specifying the material right here on the inspector I create a material called AR selection and then that's the one that I want to assign to the sphere so that's the one that we're accessing here and then basically assigning to the material on the mesh render of this game object then the next thing that I do because if this item is selected then I want to make sure that I'm changing the scale the, the reason why I need to change the scale is because I wanted to make sure that it's sized appropriately so what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the bounding radius and multiplying that by, by one and a half and then doing the same thing with, with every single one so I'm doing bounding radius times 1.5 and then also the same thing on the z-axis so I'm doing the same thing on x, y, and z then the local position is something that I'm basically exposing so you can see that this is serializable so I have control of where I want to place that so that's what I'm setting it to the local position of the bounding area and then lastly we're displaying the bounding area so let me show you how this works if I were to hit play we're gonna see the bounding area getting rendered if I go back to the scene and looks like I yep and it's disabled because I haven't really selected it yet so if I were to use this property here and set it to true you're gonna see that it's actually getting selected and in fact let me go ahead and make some changes in here I gotta go zero 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 and then we can basically start in the middle and then if I hit play you're gonna see that that it's gonna get rendered if I go here and I were to hit true on the bounding area and of course it's not gonna let me select it because it's controlled by the is selected property and then there we go so you can basically change the position of it so if I want it to be you know 0.5 which is probably the right value then you can put the bounding area it looks like we're overlapping a little bit here so that's what I have those controls so if I wanted to change the radius a little bit more we can change the radius and you can see how that nicely ni ni is nicely placed at the center of the dragon so the other thing that I can do is I also created an AR selection material you can find that under materials and then AR selection and then if you wanted to change the basically the material you're you know you're more than welcome to do that I tried to keep it as simple as I could by just basically doing a sphere with the same color of the dragon which is was kind of like a yellowish color but if you want to change it you know you're more than welcome to change it as well for now I'm gonna keep it simple so let me show you before we keep going let me show you how this looks like when I run it on my phone so I took a, a video of the demo running on my phone so that's what I want to show you let me just close out of all these things and then it's called demo.mov so if I look at that demo you can see that I'm adding we're basically detecting planes and I'm basically touching around to place the dragons so the other thing that I'm doing is I'm now selecting the statue statue in as I'm selecting them the selected property is getting changed on each one of these objects and that's what you're seeing that basically that sphere which is the same sphere that we have right here so that's everything that I wanted to show you guys if you have any other questions or comments make sure that you tell me through the comments and also you know if you if you think that there's something else that you want to learn about augmented reality please let me know through the comments as well thank you guys all right guys thank you very much for watching this video I really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about what I just mentioned please let me know in the comments also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers and also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much, guys.